Hey everybody, video here for you today. We're going to go back to ancient America, West Texas. And I said in one of my last videos on Thursday that I want to go live this weekend and I'm still looking for the right opportunity to do that. So you never know, I might pop up live over the next day or two if the opportunity presents itself, and I think it will. But today we're going to go down to West Texas, talk a little ancient America. This is called Waco Tanks, and it's right down here. People have been living here or visiting this area for about 10,000 years. The Wacos are Spanish for hollows, water holding depressions made this area pretty valuable. You could find water out here in a pretty arid climate, I would imagine, but that's how it got its name. Here's a look from ground level. There has been Folsom points discovered at this site, evidence of paleo Indian activity. That goes back over 10,000 years. This place is about a 50 minute drive from El Paso, Texas. And here is a photo from over a hundred years ago, a geological survey crew taking a photo of a horse-drawn carriage here passing through the area. What really makes this place interesting is all the pictographs and rock art found here. I believe over a couple thousand images have been found in this area. Some of them are kind of faint and they've used new technology to kind of bring them to life. But there are three different phases of rock art here. There is the desert archaic rock art that came from the hunter gatherers many thousands of years ago, some simple geometric designs. There are pictographs such as this coming from the Jornada culture, coming from maybe 1500 to 500 years ago. And then there is some relatively recent rock art coming from maybe just a couple hundred years ago. But some very interesting mask rock art and other things found here. There are many areas here where the ancient rock art is kind of overdrawn by modern rock art or graffiti, if you want to put it that way. Many settlers carve their names, etch their names in the wall here. Here is one coming from July 25th, 1884. This area also has some caves that hold water. Here is just one of them. People would have came here to gather water all the way through time. Here is a current marker of water in this one cave. And here you get a look at it here. Here he's looking down at a pool of water inside a cave at Waco Tanks. Also found throughout the area are these hollowed out depressions where they think they ground grain. And these are also found by some of the pictographs. So they think they might have been mixing or grinding their paint in these depressions here. Yellow, red, many different colors were used here. Here in this pic, you can see some faded ancient pictographs. You see one very clearly right here he is pointing to in some modern graffiti. But let's take a little closer look at that artwork. That is very fascinating. A pictograph here done in yellow, probably meant to represent the sun. Then it has a slithering arrow coming into it. What does this mean? Well, you can leave your thoughts below. But Waco Tang certainly had a history spanning maybe as much as nine, ten thousand years, coming right up to the modern era. Here is one pictograph. What does this depict? Well, I don't think it's the dude from the Big Lebowski wearing 3D glasses, but that's the first thing I thought about. Here is a look at one of the Wacos, that one of these hollow depressions that held water for a long time after rare rainfall, I guess. But here are some more looks at the place, some modern graffiti, some from 1924, 1931. But that's very interesting, the travelers coming across here. And also this place had plenty of caves it seemed like, so it might have been a good place for people to ride out. Maybe some bad times happening around 10, 11,000 years ago. Here's another pictograph, and this site here at Waco Tanks has the most mask art depictions in the ancient United States, and here is one of them. They associate this to the Star Kachina people of the Hopi, one of many pictographs found at the site. Here are a few more depictions, and some of these masks have horns coming off of them. Let's just read a little here. It says, what attracted people to this place through time was a critical resource needed for sustaining life on the desert, water. The huge red rocks and boulders are cracked and pocked with fissures and holes, Wacos that trap and hold rainwater for months at a time. The location of these natural tanks was known and in some cases marked with special symbols and inscriptions on the rocks. 
For native people, water in the desert must have seemed a special gift, and there is little doubt that this gift was commemorated in ritual expression through time. But it says, for archaeologists, Waco Tanks Park is not one but many archaeological sites encompassed under the Rubik 41 EP2, the official site designation. There are 29 archaeological localities and more than 270 rock imagery panels bearing evidence of many different cultures who made the area their home. Some traces amount to little more than scattered stone tool-making debris where hunters may have stopped to resharpen their tools and weapons. Others are the remains of campsites with harves or ovens where ancient cooks roasted their desert plants. At the small village site, archaeologists found traces of small pit house structures containing harves and burials, the first structures of their time in the Waco Bolson to be excavated. They have provided important evidence about the architectural transition from simple huts to multi-room pueblos and characteristics of later times. Archaeologists, historians, and artists and photographers have tracked and painstakingly documented the often ephemeral cultural remains at this 860-acre park. But here is a look at some more rock art, and I will leave this link below if you want to read more. Here is an excellent PDF I found on the rock art images, the pictographs at Hueco Tanks, ones I have shown you already, others I have not shown you, and the recreations of what they think these originally look like. But there is a horned, a white horned dancer. I think this image is over four feet tall, and many people equate that to Quetzalcoatl, the horned serpent coming from the Mesoamericans. But if you want to read this, I will leave this link below. It has a lot of good information here. Some of the rock art found. But this is a place that I found maybe two weeks ago and just kind of slowly read about. Here are some of those horned masks. And some of those mass styles definitely come from Mesoamerica. But here, the archaic Indians were here starting maybe 6,000 BC. And they were the second culture here. There was people here probably going all the way back into the Younger Dryas period. Here is some more images found. This is all very interesting. Some of this is similar to other ancient artwork found in the American Southwest. Some of it is fairly unique, but the mass. And here are some points that were found. There were some Folsom points going way back in time. Some other images here, but once again, I will leave this below if you want to take a look at it. But there is no certain way to read these. It's all up for speculation. And here is one, a Quetzalcoatl mass with the plume serpent on top showing jaguar teeth. Well, where does that come from? That definitely comes from Mesoamerica. And it's what I've been saying all along. This was just the northern branch. The mound builders were just the northern branch of the Mesoamericans. Here is another depiction. I know this is small, but the mass figures right there. It says Cave of the Mass. The paired painting shows strong Mesoamerican influence, as indicated by the presence of the conical helmet that symbolizes Quetzalcoatl, the plumed serpent, being depicted in Texas. Here are some more images right here. Artists' recreation of what they think these look like originally before they kind of faded away. Here is the one I showed you at the beginning. It says this large, two meter long, black and white Tlaloc figure is on the ceiling of a low shelter. And he is the rain god coming from Mesoamerican, also the god of thunder and lightning and related to water. But here are some more images coming from this area. All very fascinating because we really don't know exactly what it means, but the stars were certainly depicted. And here are some dancing figures of some kind. There are some dancers with mountain sheep headdresses. Here are some more masks. Once again, more mask artwork is found here than any other place in ancient America that has pictographs. It says solid red mask with blank eyes, similar to Tlaloc, their rain god in Mesoamerica. Here is a picture of the white horn dancer. I think this is about four feet high. Very interesting. And here are some more depictions of some of the masks they found down here. Outline of a mass with expressive face, lighting design on one cheek, rain altar on the other. All very interesting and a pretty unique place in ancient America, but here are just some more of those masks found at the site.
I just thought I would talk about this today. Some interesting rock art for sure found at this site. Humans have been hanging around here for probably about 10,000 years. Many cultures leaving their art designs, symbolic art designs on the rock walls here. Here is probably a later culture depiction coming from here, but I just thought this was very interesting. I have not talked about this site before. And I have not talked about too many sites in Texas, the Gold site, Caddo Mounds, uh, the White Shaman Mural. I talked about that maybe about five years ago. But that is Waco Tanks found in West Texas, not far from El Paso. Hope you thought that was interesting and you all have a very nice day.